Land Rover Toolbox videos is sponsored by Brookwells Parts and Accessories, helping us to help you to stay on the road. Okay, guys and girls, welcome back. It's a little midweek special. I'll just share a few thoughts with you. I've got a trailer here with no side markers down at both sides. However, I have uh, tail lights and I have a uh, two side markers, one either side that are illuminated. However, the rest are not. Well, I don't know this system, I go and have a look and I find that these are daisy chained. So I have a feed from the junction box because it comes from the rear. It goes into a plug, supplies a side marker and then it's also uh, in parallel, it will go off to the front. It's the same on the other side. So these are left and right hand. Now this is uh, quite a quandary because I wondered exactly what's going on first of all wiring is all in there to the next set of side markers so um, yeah that's quite difficult to test this side marker here has no power and you can see the plug and it's daisy chained however i followed it back and to my surprise oh yes look we have green connectors again and also i have a wire here which is severed it's been cut deliberately so it's lost the feed one side and uh, somebody has put this together and of course i've had to repair it because this trailer's loaded now what i usually do just out of a tip is wires like this okay i leave all the junctions uh, connectors open um, sealed up but visible and with this one i've paired it folded it back so there's no chance of it shorting later on and of course i'll get back to this later when i get it in for service side markers are now working i can now get this trailer gone so it's loading sugar somewhere else another part of my uh, busy life is to strip brakes down for mot i do a lot of repairs and yes uh, this is a lot of repairs here now this is what i'm getting to because we've had a lot of rain in the winter, the water does not only affect electrics, it also affects anything that's got grease in it, believe it or not. Stub axles here were actually rusty. The grease had rust in them, I cleaned them off. All the rollers here, they are supposed to have grease in them, lubricated, and they're not. They are bone dry, which means the brakes are not working very well. Um, you'll see what I'm getting to in a little while. Now here is a cam bush. You can see this is actually bone dry, even though I've dragged it through and there's a little bit of damp on there from the end of the camshaft when I pulled it through. This is not acceptable because it's actually rusted. The rust expands and then the camshaft doesn't move very smoothly. Removing the bush here, you can see it's made of brass. And it's... Um, you see inside there it's uh, bone dry and rusty well there's a lack of lubrication what should happen uh, when it's greased it should uh, bring the grease to the front and then it will slip back there's a trusty a grease gun just here okay now i've had to do this with five out of six camshafts and this bush um yeah it's it's been missed or it's just washed it out well you can see here the bush that I've replaced it with, it has a slot where the grease goes then it will travel all the way to the front and then to the back again and that gives it enough lubrication to lubricate this properly. I bet you're wondering what the hell this has to do with Land Rovers because you're thinking where the hell is a brass bush in your vehicle. Well that's not the point I'm getting to. On your vehicle you have some prop shafts and the prop shaft UJs are actually quite delicate. They're quite vulnerable because they're roadside and they're greased, okay. Now, many of people have been on forums asking how to change these, where's the knocking noise, why have I got vibrations? It's basically because this uh, UJ, well the UJs are not greased as much as they should be on your vehicle. These are quite delicate things, they have needle rollers in here, okay. Um, the grease comes through the end there and it should grease these needle rollers to keep them smoothly uh, operating. However, where grease goes in, it also water can get in as well. And the seals are not brilliant on these uh, UJ joints, so these need to be regularly lubricated. The self-sealed ones, are uh, they do last a while, then suddenly they fail. Okay, heavy-duty ones, well, they're not heavy-duty, they just give you the opportunity to grease them more frequently. Now, okay, you're running in water, you're splashing in puddles, these are going to need to be lubricated more often. 
Here I have a new prop shaft. I'll just show you have a slider. Okay, expander slider, which varies the length of the prop shaft depending on the uh, uh, position of your axle to your chassis. Same with this one. This one is uh, rusty. It's got grease in it. It should have been greased a little bit more. I can't remember where I got this one from. But basically you have grease nipples, okay, for the slider and for the UJ joint, and they should be used. I would recommend, especially in wet weather, is to grease these at least once a week so it's operating properly and it's going to run smoothly. If you get a dry joint, you'll find that it will seize the prop slightly and you'll get a judder, first of all. Um, so basically for the guys who don't know, there's a, a grease nipple on each one of the spiders or the universal joints, one at the front and then you have one for your slider on your prop shaft. If you turn your prop shaft you should be able to see it so it's accessible, you can grease it. You turn your prop shaft to the angle where it's widest so you can get a grease gun into it, okay? And this is basically just jacking up the wheel, having the handbrake off and the wheels chocked and then turn it so then you can get your grease gun to it. No brainer, that's the same at front and back. Okay, um, I basically, just quickly what I'll do is like, oh there's no nipple there, I'll just have a look around and I'll feel it. You can actually get a grease gun up to the top. Anyway, with the slider you have a hole in the end, okay, and the grease should come out of there. Uh, if you bottom it out, okay, this is why you need to grease it quite regularly because it needs replenishing again. Okay, you can see that little bit of green that came out of the end there. This, not really acceptable, it's going to let water into the slider and that will seize, okay. You should always check the slider rubber, the rubber boot for uh, any cracks or splits. If they are split, then change them because it does offer protection. Best grease to use is a, a lithium based grease or multi purpose grease. Don't go any heavier like an EP2 because that's too heavy for the uh, needle rollers. So, yeah, basically, old uh, rule of thumb is where oil and grease can come out, water can get in. And this diff pinion seal needs changing because you can see that it's uh, been leaking at some point. So a crappy old uh, front uh, prop shaft here, you can see that um, the rust that's getting in and uh, that will cause havoc after a while. This doesn't have a grease nipple. It's smooth at the moment because it looks as though it's been not actually that long fitted. However, no lubrication will I mean rust and then it will seize up. That's just as simple as that. So this is what it sounds like when you grease it, push the air out and then it's lubricated okay it's the same with wading when you're wading make sure it's greased regularly and you won't have one of these fail on you suddenly okay so there's the uh, lesson for today so while i was watching this video this uh, i'll just tell you again this is either a near side or off side feed to one side of side markers which isn't working I actually was just watching this video and I noticed I have a break in a wire loom just here. You can see that? That's been chafing and break, uh, and it's broken. And I, I would imagine actually this is exactly where the problem is, why I only have feed on one side of the trailer and it's been cobbled. So, yeah, lesson learned, be more observant.